Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Dago here, and welcome back to the Talos Principle. We've got one puzzle left, and a bunch of bonus stars we haven't collected, but as much as I would love to find all the stars, they're not as crucial. I have promised you eternal life. But know that eternity may only be attained by those who serve a purpose greater than themselves. All else is decay. So it was written in the hidden words before the beginning of time. Eternal life that's conditional. Hmm. Hmm. All right, well, um, you just keep on doing your thing, Elohim, and I will try to figure out this puzzle that you said I couldn't do. By chromatic entanglement, indeed. Mm. Don't even have the. <sighs> is this is the whole point of this puzzle to basically be impossible? That very well may be. Yeah, I think... I'm not certain this... this... I'm not certain this puzzle is possible. Which is really cruel, to be perfectly honest. Wait. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. I might be a bit dumb. Hang on. I've learned things from my previous experiences. And I... may still be stuck. Well, dang it. Hmm. No, I'm not- wait, I thought I had a thought and the thought is not- quite there. Bump. Hmm. This is driving me crazy. Let's take a good look at this. 
Do not get caught under a box. Do not touch. So close and yet so far. I'm so frustrated. <sighs> Am I just being- I'm just being stupid, aren't I? And where the heck do I get this bee? Hang on, I'm gonna go on the elevator. Don't have all the stars. Let's go upstairs, shall we? something I'm missing up here, maybe, that I need to take back downstairs? A. This all looks very sinister. Boop. Milton. Hello. Where on earth am I? I don't see anything useful. Hello? Athena 12. Oh, the great bronze bulls pulled the carriage forward, mighty bursts of steam issuing from their nostrils. Finally, they came to the gates at the top of the... whatever. Here assembled were all the many generations of the gods and demigods and souls of mortals, steel and bronze and iron and memory of flesh. The clouds parted far beneath, revealing the beautiful plains of Macedon, where great gleaming cities had once... been, I'm assuming. Ah, uh, let's see here. Homo sum humani nihil ame elianum puto. But interesting as such perspectives of the decline and ultimate dissolution of the Roman Empire may be, they ultimately put too much emphasis on individual catastrophic events. The real question that must be asked is why the Roman Empire, which had dealt with so many threats and catastrophes over the years, was so incapable of responding to these later problems. We must investigate the division of wealth, the structure of government, the location of power in Roman society. Had the Republic survived or been restored, would Rome still have fallen? What was the role of debt and slavery in creating the conditions for what we now call the Dark Ages? Rome, the saying goes, was not built in a day. It didn't fall in a day either. 
to register for the class, please email such and such. Interesting, I actually was just saw some friends of mine debating about the fall of the Roman Empire. So that's very intriguing. Oh, there's more temples! Ooh, I was in Temple A. What could be in Temple B? Oh, look at that. Doesn't it make you just want to go all the way to the top? But maybe that's just me and I have a problem. That looks spooky. Oop. Golly, how long is this game? Milton, what do you want? Oh, Oxyrhynchus. The great irony of the Ox... Oxyrhynchus? Oxyrhynchus? Oxyrhynchus papyri? Papyrus! Is that such a vital source of information about the ancient world exists only because of a garbage dump? While the Library of Alexandria burned at the hands of fanatics and conquerors, depriving us of, uh, depriving us of unimaginable insights into history, philosophy, and art, the papers carelessly thrown away by the citizens of Oxyrhynchus survived to the modern day. And though it is true that a great deal of what we know today is because of the conscious efforts of individual and organizations, such as the spectacular translation and preservation work done during the Islamic Golden Age, so much more is simply the result of coincidence and luck. We've lost text that the ancients considered to be absolutely essential, while utterly trivial, even plagiarized work has survived unharmed. So if we want our descendants to remember more than glittering emo vampires, ha, and auto-tuned teen pop stars, we have to invest in that and make sure that it survives, I guess. Yeah, that was a jab at Twilight, and I approve. The Book of the Scribe of Osiris, sometimes also referred to as the Book of the Journey to Aru, is an ancient Egyptian text discovered in the excavation of Oxyrhynchus. It has caused a certain degree of controversy among Egyptologists, as some argue that it is a classic funerary text such as the Book of Coming Forth by Day, while others believe it to be a poetic work not intended to be understood literally. The book tells the story of a dying man who asks a scribe about the afterlife. The scribe, a servant of Osiris, describes how the man's ka, or life force, will become separated from his ba, personality, and how he will have to reunite the two and become an ak, a living intellect, passing a series of trials in the duat, or the underworld, in order to reach the paradise of Aru. Unlike similar texts, the book of the scribe of Osiris focuses less on giving advice. A recent study, Karnahan, has, Karnahan and Hassan, suggests the text may have been intended as philosophical commentary on the world of the living through the allegory of the Duat. It remains unclear whether this was the intent of the original pre-Alexandrian author or result of their later translation into Greek. The earlier manuscript, which is considered to be more authentic, is too fragmentary to provide answers, though perhaps further excavation may provide insight. This is all very fascinating, Milton, but what the heck? may not be good at other puzzles, but I am quite adept at Tetris. Hello? Ooh, man. This creepy industrial warehouse type thing is giving me a major Half-Life feel. I love that game. I love Half-Life so much. A new land stands before you, my child. And know that this is a land of death, but also great beauty. As you walk amongst these tombs, consider all those who came before you, and how they served the greater purpose of which you are also part. Didn't you just say that people who serve a greater purpose have eternal life? So why are they dead? Hmm? I don't trust anything that's going on. Oh my gosh. Yep, you know what? I'm not gonna worry about stars from here on out. I didn't realize this game was as big as it is. This lock requires more sigils. Okay. And then I get a fan. Interesting. 
And you, what about you? Also requires more sig sigils. What is that? What the heck? Does this area have a boarded up? Yes, it does. It also has a boarded up level. Is that a, supposed to be like a secret level or something? I don't know. I don't know, guys. On to the next world. Hello? Tell me something. Do you always do as you're told? Hmm. Am I obliged to answer that question? I only ask because I couldn't help but notice the stash of brightly colored knickknacks you're collecting. Don't you think it a mite odd that the big voice in the sky keeps telling you to find those doodads, yet forbidding you, you to use them to climb the great big tower in the middle of it all? Milton, are you the, are you the, the modern day serpent trying to tempt me? I'll climb it when I'm good and ready. Okay, no need to get huffy. You'd be amazed how many just do as they're told without stopping to think for themselves. But maybe you're different. Then again, maybe you're exactly the same. Maybe everyone climbs the tower, and the only way to win is to stay down here with the mortals. Are you trying to manipulate me? Nope. In fact, I'm all in favor of you poking about up there, if only to see what you find. Must be something ju juicy if it's forbidden by his highness. Then again, maybe not. I'll be off then. Just wanted to drop in and run a little interference. Whatever you do, do take care. You have bigger problems than the voice in the clouds. I don't know that I like where this is going. You don't like to say his name, do you? Ah, no you don't. Huh. The dying man went unto the scribe who resided in Permajed and said, Behold, I am weak of body. My days under the holy son of Amun-Ra are coming to an end. Though I have spent my years in service of the two lands, I have not studied the corruption. Tell me, you who are wise in the writings of the dead, what lies ahead on my journey? What will I face in the land of the Westerners? And the scribe spoke, saying, At the appointed time... It is likely the location was changed according to who the copy of the book was made for. The dying man is an avatar of the owner. In the older manuscript, this is rendered as blank, some controversy as to whether it... These incomplete manuscripts are driving me crazy. The dead. Compare with Kenti Amen Amentiu, the foremost of the Westerners, a title later given to Cyrus. Sometimes mistaken for a mistranslation on Budge's part, this is actually almost certainly a mistranslation by the ancient scribe. The equivalent portion of the older manuscript is sadly not extant. I don't know about everybody else, but I'm afraid of dying. I don't see any reason to believe there's an afterlife. I'm an organism like any other. When my brain stop wor stops working, my consciousness will cease and I will be gone. And you know what? I can't just embrace that. I can't say I'm okay with it or I've accepted it or some nonsense like that. I don't want to have an ending. It terrifies me. If I had a genie right now, I'd wish for immortality. Who wouldn't? Oh, but you wouldn't really want to be immortal, the pseudo-philosophers say. Pretentious drivel. Everybody wants to live forever. Maybe everybody deserves to live forever, too. But we can't, so here we are. Live with it. Or rather, don't. Twenty-four million views. My new song with lyrics. Gotta laugh about this stuff. Laughter is the best medicine. I've got it, you've got it, he's got it, she's got it. Oh gosh. What the heck? What the heck is all that about? Okay, I gotta read these lyrics to you guys. I've got it. You've got it. He's got it. She's got it. Mommy's got it. Daddy's got it. Baby's got it. Granny's got it. Laddie's got it. Fatty's got it. Happy's got it. Sappy's got it. Chorus! Everybody! Everybody's got it! Come on! Jack's got it. Fred's got it. Bob's got it. Dog's got- Dog is fine. Chorus! Woof woof woof. Woof woof woof. Dancing dog. Everybody! Everybody's got it. Except dog. Woof! We've got it, we've got it, we've got it, everybody's got it. Except for dog, apparently. What the heck? Okay, so, see now I'm really uncertain about climbing that tower after all, because on the one hand, he's making a distinction- he, Milton, it, 
Milton is making a distinction between uh, obedience and free will as if it's uh, an A or B question. But you can choose to be obedient if that's what you want. Um, you don't have to rebel just to prove that you have free will and free consciousness. That that that's that is a a very bad. It's a lame argument, Milton. Lame. You're being he. Mil I'm just gonna call Milton a he. I know it's a robot. Maybe we don't know. But for the, for the for the sake of ease, I'm just going to call Milton he. And um, I don't like how aggressive he got there right then. Like, he just decided he's going to start helping me? What's that about? Um, but anyway, enough of my ramblings. We're actually out of time for this episode. So thank you all so much for watching. I'm sure things are going to get uh, much trickier in the future. These puzzles will probably continue to be quite difficult. And... Uh, we're going to continue un unraveling the mystery that is the story of this place, so do join me for that. As always, do subscribe for more shenanigans, and I will see you next time.